Good evening and welcome to today's episode of Page Turner. In today's episode of Page Turner, we are going to discuss a very interesting book titled Snakes of Goa. And to discuss this book, we have with us the writer of this book, someone who loves Goa, who loves every bit of its flora and fauna, Rahul Alvaris. Rahul, welcome to the show. Hi. And congratulations for yet another book, very interesting title, Snakes of Goa. Something that uh, I think most of us are uh, a little fearful of. Yeah. Uh, but I want to start by asking you, did you write this book to, you know, kind of debunk the many myths that we have around snakes in particular and other reptiles of Goa? Uh, I don't feel I wrote it in, 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 with that in mind. I feel it's like when, when, when you know, you see something which is for me handling snakes and enjoying snakes you automatically I, i'm the kind of person who wants to share this stuff with people <laughs> yeah. so it's more like actually if i've seen something at the side of the road you know a beautiful bird and then you're there you're a total stranger <laughs> i would call you and say oh you got to see this you know so that's True. the whole idea of the book yeah in that way it's basically just um, sharing it with yeah. people sharing photographs and and sharing your own ex personal experiences because I feel at this stage today hmm. um, knowledge and information is is if you want to learn about snakes you don't need to read my book if you want to know why a snake has a forked tongue yeah you can just google it true yeah. very true, very uh, true. so many things but my personal experience you can only get like <laughs> which which is a which is a unique thing. It's, it's, it's not important because it's mine. It's just Im maybe it's important because it's a, it's a fun way of sharing information and communicating, sure. you know, yeah. more yeah. than adding some value to it in that way, some monetary value or ecological value. Right. So I feel that would be the whole point of bringing out a book yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, I mean, you love snakes, you love reptiles, but if any common man sees a snake, yeah. he would just, he or she would just run away. Or I, I still see people, you know, just taking a stick and, uh, you know, killing the snake. Mm. So uh, I just want to ask you, uh, how did you develop this love for, say, snakes or animals of Goa? Mm. Uh, is there any background because of which, which led you to, you know, uh, get into this? this flora and fauna of course. Earliest I can remember, uh, my mom says, me growing up on a farm, uh, born on a farm in Walpo, in uh, Hivrem. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very remote area in, yeah. in uh, 1980. Right. Um, apparently, I was scared of dogs and chickens <laughs> because I, I could see the mouth and I could see the hands <laughs> and, and all of these True. things and the beaks True. and all that. Yeah but not scared of snakes. Mm -hmm. I was hobbling oh. on all fours after the snakes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then from there, it went to, obviously I couldn't handle snakes. So, right. you know, then you're surrounded by your uh, other kids in Goa mm -hmm. and everybody's got a fantastic <laughs> story about snake. You know, that Oriai will go into your ear and make holes in, in, in your yeah. brain and yeah. whatnot. So there is a, uh, there's a fear mm -hmm. and then there's a fascination. Yeah. But just because you have the fear, you don't lose the fascination. True, That's how true. it is. You know, we are quite, uh, many of us are fascinated with things like that are, might be very dangerous if you don't have some skill around them. Obviously, true. jumping out of a plane or, you know, um, <laughs> swimming in deep water or whatever. Yeah. But um, it was always there. And uh, my mom and dad, whenever they would take us on summer vacations, mm -hmm. go to the Puna Snake Park, <laughs> go to the Madras Crocodile Bank. Yeah. The highlight is, yeah, handling. Can them I handle straight. something? Can I hold something? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So hold a baby crocodile, <laughs> hold a snake. Yeah. Uh, but really, the defining moment was uh, nine standard vacations. Okay. Uh, going to the Pune Snake Park. Mm -hmm. I saw this guy get into the into the snake pit. And I, I don't. You must mm -hmm. have seen a snake pit yes. at some point. They go yeah. inside. It's it's just mesmerizing, you know, because. <laughs> It seems, it's incredible. This guy goes in there, it's full of snakes, you yeah. know, and you love snakes, you love these cobras, they're amazing. And he is actually, I just, the image I have is he's sorting through them like he's sorting through ropes yeah. or through fabric, <laughs> you know, vegetables, yeah. So True. it's, uh, and you know, I was bowled over and my, my dad is like, he's nuts, right? <laughs> he'll, he, any crazy idea, he, he'll entertain it for you. True. So he comes up with his idea, says, why don't you, after your 10th standard, you study well, 
you come here and you learn with these guys. Said, oh, this is like, you know, amazing. So we go straight, talk to Nilim Kumar Khaire. Mm -hmm. And he says, yeah, yeah, he must have just said it. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. you, know, uh, he can, you can send your boy. Yeah. But uh, promptly the next year, my dad <laughs> sends me there. And I, I couldn't oh. wait to get to the snake park. Right, right. Uh, so the short answer is, I don't ever remember a time <laughs> when I was not interested in snakes. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing that actually changed me. I right. was born that way. Yeah. In fact, I could I could <laughs> ask you a question, which is, how can you not be interested in snakes? That's right. what I think when I see people. I'm like, how can you not be interested in snakes? Very true, you know? very true. And I think all that we have done all over life is, you know, just run away from yeah, them. Yeah. So, like you said, Rahul, there are so many misunderstandings and myths yeah. when it comes to snakes, particularly. Uh, are there any particular myths that you would want to shed light on? Maybe a couple of them. I know there are many, <laughs> but couple of general ones which can also help our viewers, you know, yeah. to debunk these myths. What are the ones you've heard? Tell me. Um, yeah, the one is the green one that it green enters snake, the neck. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. of course that the snakes bite and they would kill you. <laughs> because we have seen so many movies around yeah, now again and yeah, I don't know what yeah. not. So, so when we, we're coming to biting, we, yeah. let's, let's deal with one very big one which is that there is this whole uh, motive strategy <laughs> that snakes put yeah. into, into coming and seeking revenge in some yes. way because you have <laughs> said something bad about them, done the wrong thing at the yes. wrong time, pl plucked the wrong fruit, who right. knows what you have done and the <laughs> snake has seen it and the snake will remember it and yeah. come maybe years later, months later, who knows and True. do something to you. Yeah. That is a complete fabrication. Yes. So there are so many stories around that, that somebody was uh, on a motorcycle and he's, he went over a snake and then yeah. later he called some <laughs> guy and that guy comes and he not only finds a snake but he shows you the motorcycle tire <laughs> oh marks on it. It is ridiculous. So you can build fantastic stories around yes, these myths. Absolutely. Yeah. The fact of yeah. the matter is nothing like that is happening. Yeah. Yeah. You end up uh, whether you hit a snake or you don't or yeah. it's half dead or whether this whole idea that if you kill uh, the male then the female will mm -hmm. find you all of that you right. know that's all just a story. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, I want to uh, point out what is very important is the only real way to get bitten by a snake is to step on it. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's not the snake that you are seeing yeah. that you need to be worried about. It's the one that you're not seeing. Mm. And I'll elaborate on that. If you get out of your house in the night and you walk towards your garage, towards your car, mm -hmm. which is in the mm -hmm. garage, now you may have a paved floor. Right. Yeah? You feel you've seen everything in yeah. the day. Mm -hmm. So your mind says it's empty. But if there's a snake there mm -hmm. moving around in the night, mm -hmm. it has to move around at some Obviously. point. Yeah. When you walk towards it, it's going to pick your vibrations. Mm -hmm. We feel it should move away. But the snake, some snakes rely on camouflage like mm -hmm. Russell's vipers. Okay. So they, they won't move when you're mm -hmm. coming towards them because the whole idea of camouflage is you shouldn't move. Otherwise, it doesn't work. <laughs> true, true, you know? true. You end up stepping on it. Mm -hmm. So that's how people get bitten. Yeah. So if you just follow two simple things, one thing is if you're walking around in the dark, you always use a torch. Hmm. Every fo cell phone has a torch now. <laughs> Obviously. Inexcusable to not use it. Yes. Yeah? Sure. Just, because you just have to see what is one foot in front yeah. of you, not even three feet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The second thing, if you're walking in any area where there's a lot of dry leaves, mm -hmm. uh, high grass, even if you don't have shoes, take a stick and just disturb hmm. the area. Hmm as you walk through it. Right. Now, if there is a snake, hmm. it will may hiss, it may flare up the yeah. hood, it will scare the bejesus out of you, <laughs> you may be knocked backwards with a heart attack, <laughs> but you will not get bitten. Yeah, true, true. So yeah. the main thing is, when you are living in a place which is full of snakes, there is no place which has that many snakes, but even if it is, yeah. if you just don't step on them, if you negotiate your way around them, mm -hmm. nothing is happening. Right, yeah, right. There is no other way. Yeah. It's happening. Right, right. And not all snakes are also venomous. That, that's yeah, one thing I, that people feel that every snake will bite. Uh, yeah, I don't feel that that is an important distinction to make because for me, uh, a venomous snake and a non-venomous snake is like saying uh, not all cutlery in the <laughs> kitchen is going to cut you in a sharp way. But yeah. the knife has a function. Right. Now, you right. will obviously, when you're eating, you will mm. use a fork and a True. spoon or a, or a, you know, a, yeah. a regular knife. Mm. You will not put a sharp knife <laughs> in your mouth and True. then expect that you will, you will end up cutting your face yes. with that. Right. So, that's the way I see it. There are going to be venomous snakes, non-venomous snakes. 
and even if we say, uh, you know, most of them are non-venomous or whatever, it's a kind of too vague a situation. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, we just see them each as a different species, sure. like we would see. Uh, otherwise, it becomes a situation where you go to a forest and you say, Oh, you know, wow, thank God I only saw deer, <laughs> I did not see a tiger because if I saw a tiger, yeah. <laughs> that would make me feel like I'm not in control. But there's great True. beauty in seeing a tiger. Yeah, so I absolutely. tell people, if you see a cobra, then you should count yourself very lucky. True. You know? True. Yeah. So, but obviously with a tiger, you would behave in a certain way and usually mm -hmm. when you go to a forest, you're within a yeah. you know safe spot. So the same way, you need to replicate that when you have snakes around you. Hmm. Not worry about whether it's a cobra or a rat snake sure. or anything like that. Yeah. I feel just the same <laughs> thing is required for all snakes, yeah. really. That yeah. you just be aware that you are not putting yourself in a position where you're going to step on them. Right, right. Uh, Raul, coming back to the book, I'm sure you have poured all heart and love into the book. Yeah. But was there any thought given as far as the structure of the book is concerned? Like how you wanted the book to look like? Uh, one, I we had one idea which was that it had to be a coffee table book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Because you know, um, when you get say the only other great book on snakes till now mm -hmm. was Ram Whitaker and Ashok Captain's book called Snakes of India. Yeah. But the 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 benefit of that book is its limitation, which is that the the plus point is that it covers about 150 species. Mm -hmm. So when you're jamming 150 species yeah. into a into a small book you're getting very little space for each so, snake. That's mm, the mm, first thing. Mm. So you can't put big pictures. Yeah. You know, you can't show variations. Right. And the second thing is, it is going to be, if some, if you see a snake and you barely seen the snake and you have to compare 150 <laughs> species. Yeah, true. You'll be lost. Lost. Absolutely. So this one, my mm. book actually, it's, it's kind of, if you look at it in that way, the fact that it is not uh, exhaustive. Hmm. It's not even exhaustive or comprehensive with snakes in, in Goa. Okay. It is most of, it's all of the common species hmm. and many of the uncommon species, okay. but that still restricts it, hmm. makes it easier to find it. I, the, the cues I've given in there hmm. uh, in terms of how to tell say wolf snakes from ra um, uh, common crates or rat snakes from cobras, that's all in there. And uh, you're blowing up the pictures so you mm. can see it in more detail. Right. Uh, the other idea was, unless you blow up some of the photographs, <laughs> you can't see the beauty. True. You know. True. And if I can't get you to see the beauty in something, then yeah. how can mm -hmm. I make it important for you? True. And then it's just an intellectual thing yeah. that it, it is important they should be saved. But if you really think, oh wow, I never <laughs> realized that they yeah. look so beautiful. True. So that was one thing, and then the, you know, the text is. I've, I've done a fair amount of writing, hmm. but honestly, I write to assist my <laughs> photographs. Right. You know, it's like an explanation yeah. for the photographs. True, so, true. I, uh, so what goes with that? What hmm. information hmm. that is relevant? Yeah. You know, okay. not, uh, not scientific in the way where you say uh, the third supralabial <laughs> scale from the nostril <laughs> to the back of the head yeah. touches this. And all. No, this um, is practical information. Okay. So you should be able to quickly identify a snake. Yeah, right. So basically, for people to enjoy snakes, True. identify them quickly, hmm. and um, yeah, that's that's <laughs> basically that's why a coffee table book, hmm. and uh, that's why a certain number of species and and the text to go along with it. Okay, okay, uh, Rahul, I want to ask you a very basic question that we used to study in science that you know all species, all human beings and all our animals should coexist. I yeah. think we are forgetting it almost every day. Yeah. So I want to know your take, can we really coexist in today's world? Is it so difficult to coexist yeah. uh, as far as the different species, human beings and all the animals are concerned? Yeah, well, uh, let's consider what, uh, what would happen if we don't coexist? What do you think would happen? True, I true. mean, I'm just wondering, what is your <laughs> thoughts if we don't... I don't think I'll be able to live <laughs> if all these species and all other human beings and animals yeah. wouldn't exist. I mean, it's as simple as that, which yeah. which we are, I don't know, we are forgetting it almost every day. Yeah, you know, at, see, the main thing that we have to remember is that... Like, I don't want you to get into the food chain and things like those because... I have, don't want to get yeah, into Yeah, we've studied it so much, but I, don't, I think... See, I, yeah. That's exactly my point. I don't yeah. Want to get into the <laughs> uses of this, right. you know, the uses of coexisting. Exactly. Because uh, you know, today I show you like you you have an old bicycle tire, 
and then you will say this is useless i will throw it out true and tomorrow you realize that out of that bicycle tire you could maybe convert something else maybe or it is a home for some other animal yes, who knows what it is true, right so what i'm saying is that basically we don't have enough knowledge hmm. to make decisions about what we are going to keep and what we are going to throw away right you right. know so we are putting ourselves in that position where we feel just because we have the technology and the weapons that we can eliminate we can poison uh, certain animals we can kill certain things and and True. we are shaping the environment only for our benefit so it's a very self centered exactly. way exactly now the consequences of that the long term con- short term consequences uh, we'll lose a lot of beauty yeah um a snake may not be important to you but it's important to me right. so as a result of your actions i don't get to see that beauty true you know um so one is that and and that's what i would rather focus on not not that oh a cobra's venom can be used to cure alzheimer's disease and all because yeah. once we start doing that then we might as well say let's get rid of all the old people in our village because they are of no use anyways very true you know? very true so yeah. i feel like at, at every animal in that way has its is is it's there because life has made it happen hmm. if you look at it that way that life has made it happen not that i am looking at it and saying that is a problem and <laughs> this is good and that is bad yeah. so yeah. once you get down to that True. then uh, living in harmony with them uh, yes. coexisting is the only natural outcome you know? there's no other way to look at it there's right. no there's no choice only it's not even a question <laughs> very true that's very the way true. i would look at it yeah. and if you see you know uh, just see one one more thing i would say think about uh, today the animals that are not going extinct are really dogs and cats and cows <laughs> and things like that because we are coexisting with them right right and therefore they are automatically getting saved because Same. we have a relationship with them you know we understand them yes. so we look after our dogs <laughs> we milk our cows we yeah. do whatever we want so all the animals we are but the ones we have no connection with yes then we are at war with them right right and once we do that with all the animals then now we know that if a bull has got horns he can also kill you but it doesn't happen <laughs> right you know a dog can also bite you but yes. it doesn't happen most right. often because right. we understand them and that right. same understanding we have to have with all other animals and then sure. then it would not be an issue at absolutely. all absolutely absolutely uh, rahul one last question you have been living in a family that has always thought about goa and its environment and claude and norma have been like hmm. the torch bearers of goa's environmental causes so uh, last question on this episode is where do you see goa heading oh that's a one person <laughs> i do, i don't i don't know how to answer that one what uh, uh, where do you see it heading yeah, i'm just wondering uh, i feel there's a great I, i'm going to give you a different answer you know please go ahead yeah i again i'm not looking at how i want things to happen because then the, then every one of us wants something i want something <laughs> you want something uh it's just things that i'm noticing is that actually what's happening is there's a great amount of with with us getting access to more resources you know you know how it was for you and me growing up as kids Absolutely. you know uh, for your birthday you you either you had three choices <laughs> you had either sponge cake or you had <laughs> plum cake or you had icing cake true. right today <laughs> you have, today you have three cakes coming yeah. one is being smashed on your face Yeah I've seen that yeah. and you're still impatient because your cell phone is not working or yes. something like that so I see a great deal of impatience a great deal of dissatisfaction because of social media because you have posted pictures of seeing some tigers <laughs> in Africa now I'm dissatisfied <laughs> I feel I have to make enough money to go and do the same thing yeah. so that's the only real thing otherwise uh, in in that sense if you're satisfied with what is if you're happy with what is happening right now nobody is hmm. saying you shouldn't make changes you shouldn't obviously you can be satisfied uh, like you you were talking about how your you know mother in law being at the age of se- 75 yeah. happy in her place and walking around and you know planting stuff and all that so exactly. both things can happen simultaneously true. that you're not in a hurry to get somewhere else but you're very involved with what you're doing right right and if that can happen and i don't see that happening i see everybody thinking till i get this or till <laughs> i do that yeah and that is showing up as a sense of impatience and you can see it the moment you get out onto the road yeah everybody is angry with you you know <laughs> and this True. is this is uh, if you ask me what direction is going i feel it's already in that direction right now i don't know at some point how long it will take before it <laughs> comes down and changes because it has to right 
right very true thank you so much rahul and thank i think you for <laughs> yeah and i think it, it comes down to that one point where we have to start from ourselves oh, whether yes. it is loving animals yeah. or whether it is loving goa yeah. is concerned yeah. it yeah. is not about joining a group and then going on roads and shouting slogans it's also about how one can change from yeah. within yeah. and yeah. one can make that small change that will help make goa more beautiful thank you so I'm much totally with that <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for the interview and for the book too and yes. i hope our viewers can go and buy the book the book is available in many of the bookstores across goa also on and amazon yeah also yeah. on amazon so please do uh, buy snakes of goa do read the thank book yes. and i'm sure you will have more information about uh, this beautiful uh, reptiles it's a great book it's come yeah. out really well i am very yes. happy with the product so i'm <laughs> yeah. happy to promote it <laughs> absolutely so i'm sure you all will fall in love with the reptiles that we are so afraid of yeah. and uh, thank you for joining uh, in this episode of page now now do follow Ritz and Books and Palashagni Studios and do join us for more episodes thank you so much